a quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Each of us can be certain we possess consciousness. But how can we be entirely sure everyone else does? To function in the world as social animals, we attribute consciousness to the people and sometimes even the animals and objects we interact with, our brains building models of their minds and projecting it on them. Today's speaker, neuroscientist and ventriloquist Michael Guaziano, explains how studying the way our minds build these models could inspire the next leap forward in both human and artificial intelligence. I started to learn ventriloquism when my son was three. It's a perfect age. He was too young to know how bad I was. I I used to make his stuffed animals talk. And as I got better, I began to realize something scientifically profound. People are social animals, and we attribute consciousness to each other. Whenever two people meet, four people are present. Me, you, the version of you I project onto you, and the version of me you project onto me. That's four sometimes very different people. And we do the same thing to more than just people. We attribute awareness to our pet cats and dogs. That's reasonable. So I'm not talking about intellectually figuring out whether something has a mind. Instead, I'm talking about that automatic gut intuition, which is often wrong, but persuasively potent, of awareness emanating from something. And there's another obvious example. We attribute awareness to ourselves with the same automatic gut certainty. The intuition is even stronger because we have so much more continuous information on ourselves. So maybe it's all one thing. We attribute awareness to puppets and people and ourselves with the same machinery. The brain constructs simple social models of minds and uses them to understand itself and its world. These are the insights that come from talking to stuffed animals. And it's also how I began my scientific work on consciousness. Why is it that we don't just process information like a standard computer, but we claim to have an experience of it? My lab at Princeton University has been outlining what we call the attention schema theory, and I'll give you a a quick sense of it. The brain is a model builder. You know about the world and about yourself only because your brain has constructed bundles of information, models. But the brain's models are not accurate. They're quick and dirty. They're efficient. For example, white light is a mixture of all colors. But for a long time, nobody knew that because the brain's simplified model is pure brightness without any contaminating colors. Here's another example. You have a physical arm, and you have a model of an arm constructed in your brain. It's called the arm schema. That model is imperfect. It's lacking in structural details, and it can make mistakes. There are illusions where you think your arm is here, but it's really there. Or if you have an amputation, your brain may still register the arm as present, a phantom limb. Well. There is always a distinction between reality and what the brain registers. So let's apply that principle to consciousness. There must be two kinds of consciousness, the kind the brain really has and the kind the brain thinks it has, and those are going to be different from each other. I call them I consciousness and M consciousness. I for information, M for mysterious. Here's how eye consciousness works. Let's say you're looking at something, an apple. Visual information from the apple is processed, it's enhanced, and it reaches a central network in the brain, sometimes called the global workspace. That apple information can now impact your speech so you can say that you see it. It can impact your motor cortex so you can reach for the apple. 
It can impact your cognitive decision-making. I consciousness is about how information reaches that central network where it can directly impact output systems. It's entirely mechanistic. You could build it artificially, and people are beginning to. But the philosophers tell us we're not done yet. I consciousness entirely leaves out the mysterious experiential side. Maybe you've heard of the hard problem of consciousness. We don't just process the Apple information. We also claim to have a subjective experience, an inner non-materialistic feel. Where does that come from? Here's what we think is going on. In addition to a global workspace, the brain contains a system relatively well mapped out by now called the theory of mind network. It constructs information. It builds models about people's minds. Part of its job is to reconstruct the contents of other people's minds, the emotions, the beliefs, the uh, intentions. But part of its job is to build a simplified model of what a mind is in the first place. What does it mean for 86 billion neurons to process something in depth? In that highly simplified model that your theory of mind network constructs, you contain an invisible energy-like essence that can take active holds of items by having a subjective experience. And it can energize you to move and act. It's the ghost in the machine. It's M consciousness, the mysterious side of consciousness. That picture constructed by your brain is not accurate. It's a quick and dirty model that evolution has given us. And all the work in my lab is focused on that particular self model that the brain constructs. So, I consciousness is the physical, mechanistic consciousness the brain actually has. M consciousness is the mysterious, non-materialistic essence the brain thinks it has. And the hard problem of consciousness is a set of irrational beliefs that derive from the brain's inaccurate self-model. Here's another way to put it. If you want a computer to be conscious the way we are, it's not enough to give it complex information processing. You also have to give it a theory of mind network so that it can build that beautiful model, that inaccurate, simplistic, but beautiful model of what a mind is. Then the machine will think it has a mysterious consciousness, just like we think that we do. This picture is a convergence of many modern theories from neuroscience and psychology that have meshed together into a kind of potential standard model of consciousness. I know it's common for people to say, oh, nobody really understands consciousness. Maybe we never will. I think people say that because a lot of people have a vested interest in maintaining the mystery. But I don't think that's true. I think we actually do know what consciousness is, at least in its general outlines. But what impact will that kind of scientific insight have on us? We're moving slowly toward a technology that could take the human mind and migrate it from a brain to an artificial platform. Think about that. There will come a time when that seems completely normal. The mind is algorithms and information, and it should be able to live just as well on one or another platform. It's an astonishing future. It's a new phase of existence. But no matter how sophisticated our gadgets become, if we don't understand consciousness, if we don't understand how to engineer it, that future is impossible. The watershed moment in the history of our species is the moment that we understand consciousness well enough to build it. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Ithaca, New York. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers 
who believe in Ted's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Cornell University. Want to listen to more TEDx Talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.